everybody, I'm Mama Baird and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing week two of my 60 day move. I recently got told that I got two months to move out of our house because our landlords are selling it and we're renting. So we had to scramble to try and find a place. Now living in Montana and the cost of living, I was not expecting to be able to find a place so quickly. But in last week's vlog, I was able to lock down a place and the landlord went ahead and gave us our keys and we start paying rent in September. So we have pretty much the whole time to cross over and move stuff from our current house to our new house. And our new house is only 10 minutes away from the current house. It's closer to the kids' school. It really worked out incredibly well and um, I'm very thankful for that. So now we just have to eliminate, downsize, and move. The kids are back in school, so that's helping that they're out of the house now. They were helpful last week, and they are going to be in the tour of the new place. I do have that in this video, so stay tuned for that. You're gonna see a tour of the place. Like I said, I do have the kids in there, so I'm trying to cut out around their overly excitement, but um, they're really excited about it and getting their own rooms and stuff. So you'll see that in today's video as well. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about what kind of meals I prepared and what I've been doing to try and kind of eat down my pantry. It's really lucked out that we don't have to pack up the whole house at once, that I can move over there in batches. Like it's, I couldn't have asked for a better situation to this. So the worst thing, you know, like I said, is I got to downsize, but is that really such a bad thing? So I'd say this week was a success. <laughs> Turkey is excited. And we're just gonna kind of go through and I'll show you what I've been up to and what I've been doing. If you're new to the channel, my name is Carolina. I live in Montana. I do a lot of pantry cooking, budget shopping, and product reviews on my channel. And then I'm also doing this current moving vlog. If that's the kind of content you're into, I hope you'd consider subscribing. I'd love to have you come join my YouTube family. First thing I'm gonna do is show you the house. I know you guys have been dying to see it. It's small, but the kitchen's not too bad and it has a really great pantry. So let's get in there and let's see our for any place. There we go. We got a new entertainment center because we're gonna have to, ours is mounted to the wall right now. So we found this, 35 bucks. Got that. It's the outside living room, it's not too bad. So this is into the hallway here. We got a little linen closet right there. And then that leads into the dining area, which goes outside to so in here, which is the garage. So, nothing too fancy. We notice that there's not very many outlets, just one over there with like extension cords and stuff. So we might need to add some more outlets. This deep freezer is going away. He's taking it, giving it to his son. All right, and then the back porch, and then here's the kitchen. I mean, pretty. Pretty common size, I would say. Comes with a dishwasher, Lazy Susan, lots of cupboards. Comes with a microwave range here. A lot bigger than the microwave we have now. Electric stove, got coils, not bad though. Nice oven. Fridge isn't too shabby either. It's got like this little cheese drawer. I'm pretty happy with that. Plus we'll still have our garage fridge. And then here, you've got an ice maker. So, some stuff up there. And then here's the pantry. Ta-da! It has a light. Yeah. I'm pretty excited about this pantry. I think it's gonna have a lot of room. You can hide in here when the children are looking for me. I think it's gonna be fun to organize. I can have my buckets, uh, my five gallon buckets of extra stuff down at the bottom there. I was thinking about doing a live with a, with Florida, organizing the pantry with me live. What do you guys think? That'd be fun. So I'm not too bad, it does have a garbage disposal. I'm pretty excited about that. All right, let's go check out the hall here. Hi, Hi. you guys excited? Is it a little smaller? Yeah, how yeah. do you turn on the light? So 
lights behind the door there. You still, but I know it has a fire alarm. It does have a fire alarm. That's good. Smoke detector. Yeah, but it's but it's gonna wake us up in the middle of the night. Only if there's a fire. Yeah. Or Mama's cooking. Yeah. A pretty good closet there. And then here's our washer and dryer. We will have to get a washer and dryer. But this is a pretty nice one. And it's got some pretty good shelving up there for extra stuff. So that's not too bad. Let's go down here to Betty's room. Uh oh, that's a face. What's wrong? I was thinking maybe that squirrel chair you can have in here. What squirrel chair? Like the one by the computer, that extra lounge chair. You could have it in here and you could have like a reading center. Okay. okay, I'll show you. The one right by the computer that Dada sits at. So here is the bathroom. Da, 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 da. So All five of us are gonna share this bathroom. Yeah! Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Hello! Hello! Mm. Hello! Toilet works. Yeah. yeah, so there's still a few things like maybe we'll have to you know, bring a shower curtain and stuff. All right, it's got a nice closet here that can hold towels and uh, some linens. It's kind of a really tall, thin spot up there. That's gonna be fun figuring out what to put up there. And then in this room, yeah, goes to the main. Can you turn on the light? It's the glow mops room. Yep, no fan. We'll have to put a fan in here. All right, so this should be able to fit our king size bed frame that husband built. Yes. This is a crawl space. Can I crawl in there? We cannot crawl down in there. Why? So that's under the master closet here. All right, here's our view from outside. Yeah. Um, the big store pulled the two of my tails. Did it? Yeah. Let's go check out the outside. Yes. Alright, so let's go outside and check it out. Mama, don't forget about the keys. Okay, I think the previous owner had a had a fascination with rocks because you got lots of rocks over here. But here are the garden beds. One of the garden beds in here. And then here's some more over here. So a total of four garden beds. They do need a little loving, but That'll be really nice. There's even room for like some bushes or something. Hey, Baba. And then here's the fence there. So we have a pretty good view. I would say the only biggest complaint out here is that it's all dry. But they said that the previous tenant wasn't um, wasn't into the landscaping. So it's nothing that a good watering can't fix. We still have a gorgeous view of the mountains. I think this is where we're gonna put the chicken coop. We're probably just gonna get a rent-to-own shed and turn that into the chicken coop because then we can take that with us wherever we move. So there's like a gate here. And look, it has a fire pit. So that's gonna be fun. You guys looking forward to having some bonfires? Hey. We'll have to bring some wood from the old place here. And marshmallows. Marshmallows. And, and then it has this little thing. We're not quite sure what we're gonna do with this yet. Yeah, we're not gonna too. be the chicken tractor. No, but the chicken tractor is going over there, Betty. Yeah. But I thought you said the chicken coop. No. Oh so yeah, chicken coop, chicken tractor is all going to be together. Oh. So this is something that looks like they had some shade in here and I don't know. Ooh. I don't know what their plans were for it, but this is here and the landlord seems pretty easy going with doing things. And I feel like this is like a farm. You think it's a farm? Yeah. It does kind of feel like a farm. Kind of like farm. Especially when we have our chickens. So lots of outdoor space, plenty of room for all of our, furniture, our outdoor furniture. There's no shade though, so hopefully... Um, we can do something about that. Yeah. Yeah. I think we'll have room for our inflatable hot tub right here. Can't gotta have the inflatable hot tub. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, maybe we'll put it right there. And then back into the house. Oh, the garbage disposal. Yeah, they don't need to see the garbage disposal. Extinguisher, sure. yeah.
you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. What do you think of the new space? I think it's going to be really great. Um, I really like the location of it. It kind of stinks that there's not many trees and there's not much shade. But on the other hand, I'm constantly complaining about how many times I have to pick up tree limbs around this place because there's so many trees. So, you know, one extreme to the next. Um, and then that pantry, I'm excited to get in there and get organizing. I love getting into a new kitchen. That is one thing that I enjoy about moving is being able to organize a brand new kitchen. So we're probably gonna be getting a washer and dryer within the next couple of weeks. My plan of attack for moving is to get some of our bigger stuff over there. So we might be like sleeping on mattresses in the floor and I'm not quite sure like when we're gonna officially sleep there and then have this be the house that we're coming to and picking stuff up. So that's going to be hopefully within the month we can get that there going. We can kind of be there and get the kids settled there at least. But my plan for now is to bring over like the carpets. I'm shampooing our Saudi rug right now. I call it our Saudi rug because we got it from Saudi Arabia. It's actually a three pack, three different ones. Um, I have one, my brother has one, and then my mom had one. So I shampoo the carpets roughly two to four times a year to try and make sure they stay clean and um, just to stay on top of it. But I want to get the carpet shampooed before I get it moved over. And then we're going to get like the couch moved over, the beds moved over, any of the big stuff that we know we're going to need. We're going to get those moved over and then we'll kind of see what we have left over, what's going to go in the garage, what's going to go in storage, what we're going to sell. So that's kind of the areas that I'm focusing on. I'm not really doing like a room at a time. I'm kind of doing stuff we don't need at the moment at a time. And I'm kind of going in the room, grabbing clothes off the closets that I know we're not going to need till later and then taking them over and getting them hung up in the closets over there. I'm packing up any linens that we don't need. I went through our hall closet which is all of our linens and our um, we call it the game closet because we have lots of games there and stuff. So I went through all the family games, any games that were missing pieces or um, we just don't play anymore, kind of too babyish you know for my kids. Then I went ahead and we're going to put like the ones that are mission sets. I'm just going to toss them and then any stuff that's good but it's just kind of too babyish for them or too um, not age appropriate, I guess. Then we're going to, that sounded bad, <laughs> just too young for them, I'll say. Then we're going to, um, I have a donation pile for that, for there. And then I really was like hard on myself with the sheets. I'm like, you know, do I really use this? Am I going to use this? I have one backup for um, our bed and then I have like a backup for each of the kids' beds. And I think that's good. I don't think I need any more sheets than that. I also feel like their sheets and linens can stay in their closet in their room. They don't necessarily have to be in their own certain closet. Okay, we got the closet emptied and we got piles made. A little miss joined up joining me. We're quite surrounded by some games there. <laughs> I think we've accumulated a few games, yeah? Yeah. Yep, so we're gonna have a keep pile. We'll probably get rid of some of these puzzles and just keep a few. We love puzzles, but we got way too many. And then we just gotta get the closet all cleaned up. Not too shabby. And then I'm going to be going through some of my bigger furniture I have. Like I have kitchen carts, I have a baker's rack, I have like a bathroom cabinet that I don't know if I'm gonna be having room for. So I'm gonna try and get those packed up and then we'll see where we can fit those. Like we also have the garage, we have outside. So we can try and put stuff everywhere if needed. I don't wanna try and get rid of too many of our good things, you know, just some of, some of the stuff we don't need. But if it's good quality and we use it, you know, I'd like to keep it if we can. And then for my van, I kind of turned it into a moving van. I took the captain seats out in the back and then their seat can kind of fold back, not all the way, it just, but it folds back enough to make a lot of extra room. So that way I can put in some bigger pieces of furniture that I'm able to move by myself and get those moved. I can put totes in there and stack them nicely to one, get stuff to the storage unit and to get stuff to the brand new house. So it kind of worked out that I turned the minivan into a moving van. I thought that was pretty smart if I do say so myself. I wanted to show you guys one of the pantry meals that I've made to try and use up some of the ingredients I have. I have this ground turkey that's Italian seasoning and then these two pastoronis that I got for clearance for a dollar. So I'm gonna kind of elevate the pastoronis and turn it into dinner. So I have the ground turkey and then I'm adding some ground peppered bacon. I got a lot of that from the food bank so I grounded 
it all up. You ground it, bacon. And then I add it to a bunch of stuff to add a little extra um, flavor in there. It's a good way to stretch your bacon and make it go a little further to grind it up. So I'm gonna pull this aside, the meat, and then we're going to fill the pan with the required water that calls for on the package. I'm gonna use that water to deglaze the pan. You could also use chicken broth if you wanna add more flavor to this, but the pastoronis has like chicken bouillon in there or seasoning in there, so you don't really need to use the chicken stock too much. I added in some butter and then I'm just going to mix in the seasoning packet first. I try and do that before I add the pasta because I feel like it helps get all the lumps out and get that water um, all in court where the seasoning all incorporated in the water and then we're going to add the pasta straight in it This is just angel hill hair pasta. You could always add more if you wanted to like um, Stretch it out a bit and add some more pasta to it And then I'm just going to wiggle this around the one of the keys to getting your pasta not to stick when you cook it Is just to make sure you keep stirring it some people add oil, but that's not necessary You just have to keep stirring it and then for dessert. I have this can of cherry pie filling and then I have a box of Jiffy buttermilk biscuit mix so I thought that it would be kind of fun to make like a biscuit bake so I'm just going to put this in one of my Pyrex pans uh, glasses here and then I'm gonna throw this in the air fryer so I just made everything the biscuit mix as is and then I'm kind of spreading it around the top to get it to cover the cherry pie filling and then we're going to sprinkle a little bit of sanding sugar on this and I'm going to put this in my air fryer because I haven't baked in the air fryer yet and I wanted to know if I'd be able to get this biscuit cooked and see what it would taste like. So I'm going to use my Dreo air fryer and then I have the temperature. I ended up setting it at 350. I wish I would have done a little lower though because the biscuit mix wasn't quite done in the center. It was a little raw so I had to cook it a little bit in batches. But now over here to the pasta. At this point, I realized that I probably added too much water. I was using my mason cup to measure and um, it did not work out. I over measured and there's too much water to this. So my solution was to make a slurry, which is just cornstarch mixed with water or I happen to use some of the liquid here that came from the pasta. And this was my go-to to thicken it up. If I would have let this cook longer, it would have made the pasta overcooked and that, but that would have reduced it and made the sauce thicker. So I decided just to add a thickening agent to it and that worked really well. It kind of thickened up all that loose water in there and made it kind of like a buttery sauce more than like a creamy Alfredo sauce. And then I added the meat to it. I didn't end up using all of that. I saved half of that that I ended up adding later to some mac and cheese for the kids for lunch. But I added most of that to it. And then the last thing that this needed was some gr fresh grated Parmesan cheese. So I have that on top there. And that really makes a big difference. The cheese kind of helps create a sauce a little bit for the pasta. And that was really good. And then I came over here to check it. This was at 15 minutes and the top got super crispy. It was really good. But like I said, the inside that was on top of the pie filling was raw. So one, I would make it a little thinner and two, not put as much on there. But it turned out really good. And that's kind of where we're at right now. So this week we're just gonna continue to move over there. I'm gonna start getting stuff set up there. So you'll see some more footage next week of me getting set up in the kitchen. Um, I probably won't show you too much of the kids stuff, you know, like you saw the layout of it, um, but I probably won't show you too much of the kids rooms or our rooms or stuff. Um, but definitely focus mostly on the kitchen because that's kind of, you know, what I show you guys the most. And then I'll be looking for any kind of ideas that you can give me as well. Um, I also posted on my Facebook group a um, real asking for suggestions for storage of stuffed animals. So, so if you're not on my Facebook group, over there I will do certain questions or posts that I don't do on my YouTube. So go join my Facebook if you can. It is Mama Baird's Homestead. I'll leave that below as well. Um, and then you guys gave me some fantastic ideas. So um, there was way too many for me to pick from and it's not for me, it's for the kids and their stuffed animals. So I'm gonna show the kids tonight and I'll let them pick out what kind of storage animal system they liked. And I'm gonna try and get some shelves up. So just, I don't know, try and get as much storage as possible and be able to make the house as cozy but not as cluttered as I possibly can, you know. I really appreciate you guys coming along on my journey with me and your support has been amazing. You guys are keeping me positive and keeping me hopeful and I really appreciate that and everybody just checking in on me and 
You guys are the best. Thank you so much. I don't know what I would do without you. Well, guys, that is our new place. Thank you for coming along and seeing it with us. We hope you're just as excited as we are to see how we're going to put things and turn this empty space into our new home. So thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Um, on